This is a short talk on scrotal swellings. If you've already done the talks on hernias and swellings in general, then there's not much more to learn. So this lecture really is quite short and sweet. If we make a start with history, it really is as in a history for a hernia. We need to ask about the onset course and duration, whether it's painful or painless, whether there are any other lumps past or present, and whether they are of the same type or not. We need to inquire about the effects on their general condition as well as what the cause might be such as a chronic cough, chronic constipation and symptoms of urinary obstruction. When thinking about the urinary symptoms we can use the mnemonic FUN which stands for frequency, urgency, nocturia but don't forget the other symptoms of terminal dribbling hesitancy, pore flow, hematuria and even hematospermia which means blood in the semen. On to examination. Again it is as in a hernia so on inspection we use the seven S's sight, size, shape, symmetry, surface, skin overlying, scars and then we can look for any special signs without even touching the patient we could ask them to cough and observe if the lump enlarges or not. On palpation again as in a hernia we need to ask we need to check for tenderness, temperature, surface, edge, consistency, relation to the surrounding structures and also check for draining lymph nodes. Well unfortunately the testicular uh, lymph nodes are paraaortic so we can't check these but it is important to check the inguinal lymph nodes which drain the scrotal skin itself. Now the important thing to ask is can you get above the swelling? If you can't then it infers it arises from the inguinal canal. If the swelling is solid i.e. it could be a tumour you need to also think about Verkov's node and also the special test for testicular examination is transillumination. This is really important because it can help us identify a hydrocyl which is fluid filled. So if we have a look at possible diagnoses, this is a diagram of a normal testicle. This is the vas deferens which actually enters the lower pole of the testis to become the epididymis and this is the testicle itself surrounded by the tunica albiginia and then the tunica vaginalis which would be around the outside of that again. So this is a hydrocyl with fluid within the tunica vaginalis. On examination it was probably fairly firm because they accumulate quite a lot of fluid and therefore often aren't fluctuant. However, the testicle is not separate to it, which is an important sign. You can get above it and it transilluminates. Here's an example of a spermatocele. It's slightly different in that it's more cyst like and it is separate to the testicle, but it's related to the epididymis. So it's very commonly at the superior pole. The important thing here is that it is separate to the testicle itself. Note that sometimes spermatoceles are slightly transilluminable, but because the contents aren't clear fluid, they're not brilliantly transilluminable as a hydrocele is. Epididymitis is a very different condition in terms of the history and is classically a lot tender, so this is the big clue. Palpation of the testicle itself might reveal an enlarged epididymis and will also be tender. The vas deferens itself is often also tender. Note again the testicle is palpable separately and should not be tender. But in epididymo or chitis, it is tender, and this is probably an extension of the same condition anyway.
This is a picture of a varica seal. Again, the lump, which isn't really a lump, is palpated completely separate to the testicle and often is described as a bag of worms. Note that a left sided varica seal could be related to a left renal cancer, which is invading the renal vein, because remember the left testicular vein drains into the left renal vein, whereas the right testicular vein drains straight into the vena cava. So a left varicocele is sometimes indicative of an intra-abdominal malignancy. But actually, having said that, most of the time there's no pathological cause. It can cause a bit of aching in the testicle, however. So the final one, the one you don't want to miss, and the reason why we often do ultrasounds of the testicle, is for a testicular tumour. Now this tumour is within the substance of the testicle, so it's important to have a feel of the testicle itself, not only for the presence of a lump, but also for firmness, which is indicative of a tumour. Note that it's very different to any of the other ones, especially a spermatocele, which clinically we should be able to tell the difference because it is again I say within the substance of the testicle itself. Now remember that a hydrocele can actually occur secondary to a testicular tumour so we need to remember to do an ultrasound if we only palpate a hydrocele too although the likelihood of there being a tumour in that case is low.